Hi there, this is Marcy and David aboard the good ship Nine of Cups. David really enjoys Marlin Spike seamanship. In this video, he'll show you how to use old lines like halyards and dock lines to create a practical and very useful rope rug, or in sailor's parlance, an ocean plat mat. We hope you find it helpful. We have hundreds of feet of line on Nine of Cups, and all this line is constantly wearing out. We probably replace, oh, 200 feet of line a year. Rather than throwing it all away, I recycle it by making ocean plat mats. They're comfortable and attractive below deck. They make nice welcome mats on the dock, and they're easy on the feet when we have to stand at the helm for long periods. We probably have six or so aboard for various uses. They're also very nautical and make great gifts. Since I make so many, I use a pattern. I drew the pattern onto plywood and drove finishing nails into the plywood to help hold the line in place. You could also put nails or tacks into a piece of cardboard or just print out the pattern on paper. The dimensions on this sketch are for a mat using half inch to three quarter inch line. The board size is about 15 by 20 inches. As you follow the pattern, the main thing to remember is that a solid line like this crosses over a broken line like this. To make a mat, you will need about 45 feet of half inch to three quarter inch line. To begin with, flake the line out and find the middle. It doesn't really matter where you start in the pattern, but I usually begin on the left side. I'll show you my progress as I follow the pattern, then give you an opportunity to pause the video periodically and get caught up if you're making your own mat. I'll start laying out the line now, and I'll give you a chance to pause the video once I finish the first small section. If you're making your own mat, now's a good time to pause the video and get caught up. Now I'll do the next section, and you can pause the video when I finish. This is a good place to pause the video and get caught up again. At this point, the first pass is complete. Pay close attention at each intersection as to whether the line passes over or under itself. After you complete this much of the pattern, check again to make sure your mat is correct. It's a whole lot easier to undo and correct a mistake at this point than it will be later on. Next, we'll start the second pass. Take the end of line A and follow line B as shown. This is called doubling the knot. At this point, it's easier if I pull out the nails, which is what I'm doing now. And now I'll continue with the second pass until it's completed, and then we can pause the video once again. This is a good time to pause again. I finished the second pass and just begun the third pass. And now I will continue as before. This line is small enough to make four complete passes. I'll make all four passes, then pause again.
At this point, I have almost completed the fourth pass, but the mat is too loose and there's not enough line to complete the pass. I'll start at one end and tighten the mat up. Sometimes I have to repeat the process three or four times to get it right. Here's the underside of the mat after I've snugged it all down. The last steps are to whip the ends of the line and stitch them in place. If you don't know how to whip a line, we have a video on the subject on our blog site. The address of our blog site is given at the end of the video. I use a large needle and waxed twine to stitch the ends in place. I stitch each end to the adjacent line. And this is the finished mat. Thanks for watching. Find more travel and how to videos on our blog site at www.justalittlefurther.com or our website at www.nanacups.com.